Welcome back, everyone, to our final installment of our Heaven and Hell series. And as always, you're going to need this, your Bible. You're going to need a pen or pencil, and you need some paper. And if you got all that, then you're ready to go. And before we jump in to what we're going to learn about today, I got a game for you. It's called Green Light. It's a different version of what you may be familiar with, a traditional red light, green light. This is just green light. And what I want you to do is wherever you're at in your room, uh, play this with your parents, play this with um, your siblings, whoever's there. Go to one side of the room, and then I want you to listen to this audio. You're going to hear some audio that is going to give you several trivia questions. And you're going to have to decide, based on what it says, whether you're going to move two steps forward for true, two steps forward for false, or don't move at all to see if you can get as far in the game as you can. But just listen to the, the audio, and it will give you all the instructions, and then we'll come back together after green light. Get ready. It's time to play green light, the game where you get the green light if you know what's right. Everybody stand at the starting line and get yourselves ready. Here we go. The object of the game is to be the first person to cross the finish line or be the person who is the farthest along at the end of the game. Let's start by having everybody take two steps forward. One, two. Okay, now listen carefully. I'm going to make a statement, then I'm going to ask you to do something. According to NASA, it possibly rains glass on the planet known as HD 189733B. If you don't want to risk it, stay right where you are. If you think that statement's true, it's your turn to take a step forward. If you think that statement is false, now it's your turn to take a step forward. This is a true statement, so all of you who stepped forward to say that you thought it was false need to go all the way back to the starting line now. Bye-bye. Okay, let's continue. Everybody, take another two steps forward. One, two. Listen carefully to my next statement. Some bugs have been known to confuse the roar of power tools for mating calls. And in response, they have swarmed people using lawnmowers. All right, if you don't want to risk it, stay right where you are. But if you think that statement is true, it's your turn to take a step forward. If you think that statement is false, now it's your turn to take a step forward. This is a true statement. So all of you who stepped forward to say that you thought it was false, you need to go all the way back to the starting line now. Bye-bye now. Okay, let's continue. Listen to my next statement. Queen Elizabeth II is a trained mechanic. If you don't want to risk it, stay right where you are. If you think that statement is true, it's your turn to take a step forward. If you think that statement's false, now it's your turn to take a step forward. That is a true statement. So all of you who stepped forward to say that you thought it was false, you need to go all the way back to the starting line. Bye-bye now. Okay, everybody, take one more step forward and listen to my next statement. Here we go. Rats have the highest blood pressure of any mammal. If you don't want to risk it, stay right where you are. But if you think that statement is true, it's your turn to take a step forward. If you think that statement is false, now it's your turn to take a step forward. This is a false statement. So all of you who stepped forward to say that you thought it was true, you need to go all the way back to the starting line. Bye bye now. It's actually giraffes who have the highest blood pressure of any mammal, as far as we know. Here's my next statement. Some dogs have feet that smell like corn chips, and it's sometimes called Frito feet. Now, if you don't want to risk it, stay right where you are. But if you think this statement is true, it's your turn to take two steps forward. If you think that statement is false, now it's your turn to take two steps forward. This is a true statement. So all of you who stepped forward to say that you thought it was false, you need to go all the way back to the starting line. Bye-bye now. Okay, let's keep going. So, there is a league of extraordinary communities, which includes Boring, Oregon, Dole, Scotland, and Blandshire, Australia. <laughs> now, if you don't want to risk it, stay right where you are. But if you think this is a true statement, it's your turn to take two steps forward. If you think that statement's false, now it's your turn to take two steps forward. This is a true statement. 
So, all of you who stepped forward to say that you thought it was false, you have to go all the way back to the starting line. Bye-bye now. Okay, let's do another one. Both John Adams and Thomas Jefferson died on December 31st, 1826. If you don't want to risk it, stay right where you are. But if you think it's true, take a step forward. If you think that statement is false, now it's your turn to take a step forward. This was a false statement. So all of you who stepped forward to say that you thought it was true, you need to go all the way back to the starting line right now. Bye bye now. So both John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, they died on July 4th, 1826, exactly 50 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Okay, take a look now. This is the end of the game. So who is the furthest along? That's your big winner for the game of Green Light. Green light. Talk to you later, skaters. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is an interesting little twist on the game. And who knew that a giraffe has the highest blood pressure of any mammal? I certainly did not. But now you do. So as I said, we are in our final installment of Heaven and Hell. The series concludes today. And where we have talked about heaven, where we have talked about hell, we've talked about Satan, we've talked about angels. Now, do you think, even though we've talked about all of those things, that we've learned all there is to know? No, of course not. There's no way. We all have so much more to learn. Even in that game that we just played, you may have known some of those facts. I doubt it because I didn't know any of them. But a lot of them you probably didn't because there is still so much more for us all to learn. And when it comes to the Word of God, we're always going to be learning. We're always going to be studying. Always stay a student of this book. And that's why the most important thing about this series is not what we've learned about heaven and hell. That's not the most important. The most important thing about the series is that we've been learning about how to find rock-solid truth to go against sinking sand truth. And we've been using a scripture each week, if you remember. It's Matthew 7, 24 through 27. And it says this, So then everyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man. He builds his house on the rock. This right here. You're building it on the rock. The rain comes down, the water rises, the winds blow and beat against that house, but it does not fall. It is built on the rock. But everyone who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. He builds his house on the sand. The rains come down, the water rises, the winds blow and beat against that house, and it falls with a loud crash. So we have got to determine if we're going to build our life on rock-solid truths or sinking sand truths. And I think after four weeks, hopefully you've got this down, rock-solid foundation gives for, uh, makes for a very strong house. If, you're, if your foundation is built on rock or built of rock and built on it. And then with sand, this stuff will be washed away, blown away. It does not have any stability. It falls apart very, very easily. And so would a house if you built it on it. And so does our lives if we build our life on sinking sand truth. So here's four things we've learned during this series. I want you to read them with me here. God's word is like a solid rock. Everything else is like sinking sand. Living according to God's word helps you stand secure. And God's word helps us have a clearer picture of what's true. Today we're going to focus on this question. Am I going to heaven when I die? Are you going to heaven when you die? This is the question. What is the answer? Well, we're going to dive in this today. And this is not a question you need to just wonder about. You can know the answer to this one. But your answer needs to be based on God's word. Not based on other people's opinions. Not on other people's ideas or their viewpoints or their angles. It's got to be based on on the word of God in order for you to know that it's a rock solid answer. And today we're going to look at three statements that have to do with getting into heaven and hell that will help you to know your answer to this question. And some of you might already know the answer. Some of you might not be too sure. And that's what we are here to do, to work this out and help you really take ownership of the answer. But a few months back, we introduced a name for God. That means everlasting God. Do you remember what that was? If you don't, it's El Olam, 
El Olam means the everlasting God. And uh, he's the alpha. That's what it means when it comes to the everlasting God. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He is the end. He's the beginning. He is the everything. And in the next few weeks, we're going to be learning a new name for God when we start our new series, which I'll tell you about later. But to wrap up this series, we're going to be looking at statements about getting into heaven and hell. But we'll also be looking at one statement that does have to do with God being El Olam. You know how this works if you've been here lately. You're about to hear four statements. And then I want you to write these statements down on your piece of paper there. So get your paper out, get your pen, get ready to write. Because you're going to need these because I'm going to give you time here in a little bit. I'm going to give you scriptures to go with these as well so that you can find the rock solid answers. These four statements are you have to determine is it a rock solid truth right here or a sinking sand statement. Meaning it's a lie. It's not true. It's false. So here you go. Here's your four. Number one, God was created. God was created. Go ahead and write that down on your piece of paper there. God was created. Is that rock solid or is that sinking sand? Next, to be completely forgiven, we need to keep asking Jesus to forgive us every time we sin. To be completely forgiven... We need to keep asking Jesus to forgive us every time we sin. Rock solid, sinking sand. Write that down. At any point, you can pause this video and roll it back to get this whole statement. Number three is, if I do more good stuff than bad stuff, then I'll be good enough to get into heaven. Surely you've heard that one before. What do you think about that? If you do more good stuff than bad stuff, then I'll be good enough to get into heaven. Rock solid, sinking sand. And last one, since Jesus died for the whole world, nobody will be sent to hell. Since Jesus died for the whole world, nobody will be sent to hell. So is that rock solid or sinking sand? Okay, you got those written down? If you need to, roll it back and get the rest of it. Because now we are going to determine if any of those are rock solid or if any of those are sinking sand. So, and the only way that's going to happen is by basing it on the Word of God. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to give you the verses that correspond with this. And you're going to spend some time looking each one of these up. And then you are going to put either that's rock solid next to the statement, rock, or you're going to put sand. Rock, sand, rock, sand, whichever it is. So number one, God was created. I want you to look up Psalm 92. Now 90 is the chapter, verse 2. Psalm 90, verse 2. And then also look up Isaiah 40, verse 28. That's for God was created. Then I want you to look up for number two statement, to be completely forgiven, we need to keep asking Jesus to forgive us every time we sin. That is Hebrews 10, verses 10 through 14. Hebrews 10, verses 10 through 14. The number three statement, if I do more good stuff than bad stuff, I'll be good enough to get into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, and then last, since Jesus died for the whole world, nobody will be sent to hell. I want you to look up John 3, 16 through 18. Don't just stop at 16. John 3, 16 through 18. I want you to look at John 3, 36, and I want you to look at Matthew 8, 12. So there is your words. There are your scriptures to go to. Go to the Word of God. And look at these statements, and I want you to come back and be able to determine for yourself if that's rock or sand statements. I'll see you back here in a few. And that's, it's up to you how much time you need. But you just pause this video, and when you're done, press play, and we'll go forward. All right, you all done? Because we want to take a little deeper look at these statements today. But I'm not going to read through those Bible verses. So if you're skipping ahead, I need you to stop. You need to go back and read these verses because I'm not going to read them. It'll take way too much time. We're just going to jump right into the application of each one of these and decide whether or not these were rock or sand statements. So if you haven't done that, pause, go back, look those scriptures up because I want you to see what God's word is telling you about these things. Okay? Okay. I'll give you one second to pause. All right, that's it. All right, now all of you are continuing forward with me. I'm trusting and believing that you are doing the right thing and are staying in step with us here 
And here we go for the first one. See, now three of these statements have to do with getting into heaven and hell. And one of them had to do with something we've been talking about for months, which is God being El Olam. So which statement had to do with the everlasting God, with God being El Olam? Do you know which one it is? Well, if you're saying statement number one, then you would be correct. That is right. It said God was created. Well, that's not true. God has always been, the word tells us. He's the only thing in the universe that was not created. He created everything else, but God always was. I know it makes your mind just go, but he was always here before anything because he is the El Olam. He is the everlasting. He is uh, all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's, the, he's Adonai. He is the ultimate. So that is not a true statement. God was created. No, that would be sinking sand statement on that one. Hopefully you wrote sand. All right. So let's look at the next one. The other three statements we had. Number two was to be completely forgiven. We need to keep asking Jesus to forgive us every time we sin. Hopefully as you looked at the scriptures you saw that is not rock solid truth. No, you do not. Now, when you mess up, when we sin, should we? Hey, hey, forgive me. Just know he's already done it. But yes, we should have a heart of wanting to ask for that forgiveness. But truthfully, as the word said, he went to the cross and took our sin. He went to the cross one time to take sin for all time. So your sin is covered by the blood of Jesus on the cross. However, our lives should be changed in that we are trying to go against that sin. We're going to talk about more of that here in a little bit. So that would also be a sinking sand statement. Number three was, if I do more good stuff than bad stuff, then I'll be good enough to get into heaven. What did you discover there? Hopefully that you have no control over that. You you can't be good enough. You can't brag your way into heaven by saying, well, look at all the things I've done. It's not based on works. It's not based on anything that you ever can do. So you can't just be good enough. Do more good than bad. It has no bearing. It's about your belief in him, which leads us to statement number three. Since Jesus died for the whole world, nobody will be sent to hell. Is that rock solid? No, that is sinking sand. And listen, God doesn't send anyone to hell. That's a choice we make. We talked about that in the earlier lesson. God has given us a choice through his son, Jesus, to have eternal life. But it's up to us to choose that. And if we choose to have that life with Jesus, to choose him and receive and accept that he has taken our sin, then we get the reward of eternal life. However, if we choose not to receive that, and we choose not to believe that, we will have the eternal, not reward, of separation from him forever. So it's up to us, as all those verses indicated. Since Jesus died for the whole world, nobody will be sent to hell. That is a sinking sand statement. So, now that we have gone through those four things, I want to just show you a quick little video because uh, there's, there's these few people that will use some of these statements that will think that uh, as you listen to these people in the video, notice the reasons for thinking they are not going to hell. Take a look. Are you going to hell when you die? No. Why not? Jesus loves everybody, so everyone's going to heaven. Are you going to hell when you die? No. Why not? Well, when Jesus died on the cross, didn't he eliminate hell? Are you going to hell when you die? No. Why not? Well, I've done some bad things, but I've done more good things than I have bad, so that means I'm going to heaven when I die. So as you see there, there are many people who think they're going to heaven when they die, but they believe they're going to heaven for sinking sand reasons. Just like you saw in that video, those people all had reasons for being saved that had nothing to do with truth, rock solid truth. They think they're saved, but they're wrong. They're building their hope on sand instead of the rock solid truth of what the Bible says. I want you to learn a word. If you've never heard it before, I'm sure you have, but we're going to say it together anyway. Salvation. I want you all to say it on the count of three where you're sitting at home. One, two, three. Salvation. Yes, salvation is something you receive from God when you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose from the dead. Now, that's a choice for us. We must receive 
Jesus' death as payment for our sins to be saved from going to hell. We have to receive that. No one can do that for you. It's not because we are good that we get to go to heaven. So when you and I are sitting at this crossroads and we're looking at this choice to make, it's a fork in the road. And one goes to heaven, one goes to hell. It's up to us. We have to choose which path we're going to take. And we can't say, I'll I'll just do enough good things. I'll I'll be good. I'll try to do more good than bad. But that should be enough to, to push me over to this side of the road, to go to heaven. But it doesn't work like that. It's simply a choice of ours that we have to believe. So you can't be good enough to get into heaven. It's not just because Jesus loves everybody that we get to go into heaven. Now, he does. He absolutely loves every single one of us because he created every single one of us. And our Father in heaven wants nothing more than his children, us, to be with him in heaven forever. But it's, again, our choice. We have to choose it. And it's not because Jesus eliminated hell when he died on the cross. As nice as that would be, that when Jesus went to the cross and eliminated our sin, it did not eliminate the real place that is hell where we have a choice whether or not we go to. So these are sinking sand statements, sinking sand lies. And if people believe these things, well, we need to help them understand that they're not going to heaven when they die. We have to do it in love. And that's what I'm doing with you today too, is showing you the truth in love. Unless they accept what the Bible says, they are choosing an eternal destination forever separated from God. So God's word is the only rock solid truth that we can stand on. And in a little bit, you're going to read a few Bible verses which help us to not have sinking sand thinking about how salvation works. Today's statements were chosen because many people in in the world, both kids and adults, they, they think these things. That's why we've chosen these statements. People believe these things. We didn't just make these up. And uh, maybe some of you, when you heard these four statements, you were like, oh, that's sand, 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 sand. Those are not true. But that is not what everyone believes. The rest of the world, worldly thought, is going, going to actually believe some of these things. So when we get the opportunity, we need to be able to share with them the truth. So today we want to make sure you know the truth. So that you can stand up to these sand statement so let's look at the sinking statements again so god was not created we learned that to be completely forgiven we need to ask jesus to forgive us every time we sin. no to be completely forgiven we just have to accept what jesus did for us on the cross to remove our sin and you can't do enough good stuff like verse or like uh, the the third statement says it's not about what you can do it's about what he's already done for you And that last statement, since Jesus died for the whole world, since he died for the whole world, it's up to us to make the choice whether or not we are going to choose heaven or hell. You know, so one way to understand salvation is this. I sinned, I deserved hell, and as a gift of grace, Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins and your sins. And it's up to you, it's up to me, to believe in Jesus that So that we can receive that free gift of grace that he's offering to you, that he has offered to me. And when I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is who the Bible says he is, all my sins are forgiven, including the sins that I commit tomorrow and the next day. Jesus died to pay for sins once and for all. So let's look at our question one more time. Am I going to heaven when I die? Am I going to heaven when I die? I can answer this question with a resounding yes. I am going to heaven when I die. And here's why. Jesus paid the price for my sins. And I believe in him. I've accepted that in my heart. And I follow no one else. I follow him and him alone. And let me show you a verse that can have, give you rock solid confidence in this fact. It is Romans 10, 9 through 10 that says, Say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then you will be saved. With your heart, you believe and are made right with God. With your mouth, you say what you believe, and so you are saved. So now, each of you can answer the question, Am I going to heaven when I die? Well, if you believe in your heart 
that Jesus died for your sins, you believe he rose from the dead three days later from the grave, then the answer is yes. Yes, you are. Because Jesus is your Lord. And then, at that point, you can know with rock-solid confidence that you are going to heaven. Yes, you are. Remember the game we played in the beginning? The green light game? Well, I want you to stand up wherever you are right now. I just want you to stand up. And we're going to, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Get to one side of the room, but, or just stand right in front of your screen. You're going to step forward with a yes which, with each one of these questions I'm going to ask you. So here's your first one. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins? The answer is yes, step forward. Do you believe that El Olam, the everlasting God, raised Jesus from the dead? The answer is yes, step forward. Is Jesus the Lord and King of the entire universe? If the answer is yes, step forward. And if you said yes to all of those, then you are ready to say this prayer with me. So just standing right there in front of your screen, I want you to just bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat this after me. Dear God, today I admit that I have sinned, that I'm not perfect, but I'm believing today. I'm believing in your son Jesus. I'm believing that you died on the cross for me. I'm believing you rose three days later from the grave for me. For me, And I choose this day to follow you with my whole heart. To follow after you. To pursue you. To know you. To love you. To serve you. And I will do that as I confess with my mouth you are Lord of my life. I say that today. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. If you've just made that decision, it's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life, and that is salvation. Now, we all come back around to the question that we started with, am I going to get to go to heaven when I die? Well, can you answer that now? On the count of three, let me hear you yell at one, two, three. Yes, indeed. Even if you sin tomorrow, you're still going to go to heaven. Now, listen, that does not mean you have a pass to just do whatever you want. If you said yes to the Lord and you have chosen this day to follow in his ways, then you start living in his ways. You should want to not sin anymore. That doesn't mean you just get to sin and have a good time doing it. As a Christian, you should hate sin and not want anything to do with it. But you aren't perfect yet. One day you will get to heaven and we will have perfect bodies. But at this point, we're going to still mess up. We're still going to do things wrong. Every day. But because of your changed life in Jesus and because you love him, your job now is to fight sin. You are a sin fighter. You want to resist sin. You want to flee from it. Every day, too, because you love God. El Olam is working in you in Philippians. Us that he's going to keep working on making you perfect until the day of Christ Jesus returns. Now, grab your pen. Grab your pencil. Get your piece of paper out because I want you to write down two things as we conclude our Heaven and Hell series. Because this Heaven and Hell series has given us a lot to think about, hasn't it? So I want you to take a moment right now to think about questions you may have. Because we're at the end now. You may have some additional questions that you want to find out about. Go to your parents. Go to your ministry leaders. Go to your small group leader. Find someone to get those questions answered. I mean, ultimately, this is where you're going to end up. But you're asking them, do you know a good place in the Bible to help me answer this question? And let's get it worked out. Don't just sit there on it. Get it answered. And then I just want you to write down one truth that you learned about today. One truth that God has revealed to you today. And that's it. That's it. We've concluded our Heaven and Hell series. Next week we start a new series. It is called Mind-Blowing Awesomeness. And we're going to do that for four weeks. What could that ever be about? Well, you'll soon find out. Come back next week. Until then, have a great week. And God bless you. And congratulations to all of you that just said yes to Jesus today. Love you.